Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate. This lesson is 3.4, what's going on with the weather, part one. For this lesson, you won't need any at-home materials. You'll just need to follow along with me and bring your thinking science brain. Can you do that? I bet you can. Are you ready to do some science today? Sweet, let's go. All right, welcome back. Do you remember what we did in the last lesson? We looked at graphs. How did looking at these bar graphs of temperature and precipitation data help us understand the weather in Anchorage, Alaska and St. Petersburg, Russia? Think back about it and tell me what you think. Yeah, looking at graphs, especially bar graphs, help us to understand patterns in the weather. So for example, when we looked at this average high temperature in St. Petersburg, Russia over a year, we could see that the pattern was low temperature, high temperature, low temperature. And when we look at the precipitation, we can see a pattern of low precipitation, high precipitation, low precipitation. And that helps us figure out patterns and seasons, which is a really important part of weather. Awesome. Do you think bar graphs and climate patterns might be helpful in figuring out which of the three islands would be best for the orangutan reserve? Yeah, I think so too. I hope we can get some climate data across many years for all three islands. Then we could compare them and see which one would have the best weather over the long range for the orangutans. That would be really helpful. So today we're gonna read a book about a girl who moves from Boston to San Francisco. She has a lot of questions about the weather in both places, so she uses bar graphs to compare the climates. Now you might be asking me, Scientist Kate, why are we gonna read a book today? Well, that's because one of the things scientists do to learn more information and gather evidence to support their arguments is they read. So we're gonna be reading like scientists today. And this book, like I said, is about a girl who moves from Boston to San Francisco. And the weather in those two places is really different. So do you know where Boston and San Francisco are on a map? It's okay if you don't, I'm gonna show you. Look at this map. Do you know what this is a map of? Yeah, it's the United States of America. So here's Boston way over here on the East Coast. San Francisco is way over here on the West Coast in California. Boston is in the state of Massachusetts, by the way. So the, um, the narrator, the character in this story, the main character, she moved from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way across the United States to San Francisco, California. And y'all, these two places have very different weather. And you might be asking yourself, how would scientist Kate know anything about this? Well, actually, I have a connection to this story. I just moved across the United States too. Do you remember that I live in Seattle, Washington? I moved from Baltimore, Maryland, which is way over here on the East Coast near, near where um, Boston is. I moved all the way across the United States to Seattle. And y'all, the weather in Baltimore and Seattle are very, very different. So I can't wait to read this story because I think I'm gonna have a real connection to this character. So while we read, we're gonna discuss the bar graphs throughout the book and we're going to visualize what the information in each graph tells us about the climate of that place. So throughout the story, there will be bar graphs and we are going to study them together. Are you ready? Let's read. As we read, I want you to make sure to stop and discuss each graph. So we're going to stop and finger trace each, the shape of each graph and describe the climate that it represents. So we're gonna do that. Okay, ready? <clears throat> me, 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 me. Toby's family just moved all the way across the country. They used to live in Boston, Massachusetts. Now her family lives in San Francisco, California. Toby, her brother Max, their mom and their dog, arrived in San Francisco in the middle of July. Toby was really surprised when she got out of the moving van in front of their new apartment building. It was cloudy and kind of cold. Cold, she said. In July? What's going on? 
Before arriving in San Francisco, Toby thought the weather was always hot in July, no matter where you were. In Boston, she wore shorts all summer long. The last weather report she heard before she left Boston said that the temperature was 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That was hot for sure. Toby asked her brother what he thought the temperature was right now in San Francisco. Max found a thermometer hanging outside their apartment building. It said 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, thought Toby. That's a big difference. What's going on? Lots of things were different about San Francisco. Of course, there was a new city to learn about and new people to meet. But the weather was the thing that surprised Toby the most. As Toby helped her family open the boxes in their new apartment, she made sure she found some warm clothes as quickly as she could. I'll need these, she thought. She predicted that the weather would get warmer in a day or two, but it didn't. Every day she went outside and felt the temperature of the air and looked at the sky. Every time it was still cool, still cloudy. Is it cool and cloudy all the time in San Francisco? Toby wondered. She hoped not. She decided to find out. First, she asked Max, but he wasn't sure. He thought they should look online for San Francisco weather data. Maybe that would help them figure out what was going on. Max and Toby looked online to find temperature data for San Francisco. They had to look in a few different ways, but finally they found a graph that showed the average high temperature for each month of the year in San Francisco. Toby and Max found the coldest and warmest months of the year on the graph. The data showed that September and October were the warmest months. Toby was glad to find out that September and October were probably going to be warmer than July and August. But when she looked more closely, she saw that the bars for September and October were only a little bit higher than the bars for July and August. In fact, the graph showed that the temperature didn't change much from month to month in San Francisco. That's strange, Toby thought. Now let's stop right here and visualize the data in this graph. So do you remember the graphs for Anchorage, Alaska, and St. Petersburg, Russia? Show me with your hand what shape the pattern of the bars made. Yeah, it went like this, like a hill. And then back down again, right? So low and then high and then low. So let's look at this temperature data. Get your tracing finger ready and let's trace the outline of the bars on this graph. Ready? Here we go. Hmm. Do you see a big hill like we saw in the other data? Not really. There's a little bit of a rise in September and October, which is what the text tells us. But are September and October that much warmer than, say, November and December? No. They're maybe only about 10 or 15 degrees warmer. So the shape again goes like this. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge hill like we're used to seeing. So that tells us that the weather in San Francisco, does it change a lot through the seasons? No, it stays kind of almost the same through the seasons. Interesting. Toby thought about living in Boston and packing away her shorts and sandals in September each year. She thought of the hats, gloves, and boots she wore all winter long. In Boston, it was always hot in the summer and cold in the winter. It looked like the pattern of temperature was different in San Francisco. Did that mean she would never need her warmest clothes? She decided to find a temperature graph for Boston so she could look at it next to the graph of, for San Francisco. Then she'd be able to compare the patterns. Ooh, Toby, you little scientist, you. She's gonna compare, which is one thing that scientists love to do. So, do you think there's gonna be a difference in the weather pattern that Toby sees in Boston and in San Francisco? Let's find out. Toby saw that even though San Francisco was colder than Boston in July, it was much warmer than Boston in December. 
So let's look at Boston. This is Boston on the top. Are you ready to get your tracing finger going? Let's do it. Ooh. So the pattern goes way up and then way down. So what about in San Francisco? Do we see that same big hill? No, it's just kind of like a little bit, a little tiny hill. All right. Maybe I'll be able to play soccer outdoors this winter, she said to herself. Toby loved soccer and especially liked playing on a grass field. In Boston, she could never play soccer outside in the winter. It was always too cold and sometimes snowy too. But the temperature graph for San Francisco gave her evidence that San Francisco winters are warm enough for outside soccer. Hmm, that sounds good. A few weeks later, Toby noticed that some days had been warmer than when she first arrived, but there had been many cool days too. She also noticed it hadn't rained the whole month they had lived in San Francisco. That's strange, she thought. We always had a few thunderstorms in the summer in Boston. Is it ever going to rain in San Francisco? She decided to look at more weather data to find the answer to her new question. Toby and Max looked up data about the amount of precipitation in San Francisco. Let's take a look at the graph. The graph showed that there was hardly any precipitation in San Francisco during June, July, and August. Max said that when San Fran uh, Max said that when there's a lot less precipitation during one part of the year, people call it a dry season. San Francisco's dry season was in the summer and its wet season was in the winter. Toby was pretty sure that the pattern of precipitation was different in Boston. However, she needed evidence to make sure she was right. Ooh, Toby out here using evidence. What a scientist, I love it. Max and Toby found a new graph showing precipitation data for Boston. Toby looked at the two graphs. The Boston data showed that there was precipitation in the summer. In fact, she noticed there was some precipitation all year in Boston. The bars on the Boston graph were all about the same height. The amount of precipitation hardly changed from month to month. So there was no wet season or dry season in Boston. That was Boston's pattern of precipitation. So let's compare the graphs. On the top, we see Boston. Do you see a dry period in Boston where there's not really any rain? No, there's rain in Boston every single month. What about San Francisco? Take a look at the graph for San Francisco. Do you see that there's a dry season? Yeah, in J June, July, and August, right here, we see that the precipitation goes way down. So Toby knew that in Boston, there was rain in the warm part of the year and snow in, cold, in the cold part of the year. Since San Francisco never got very cold, did that mean it would rain in December instead of snowing? Toby was happy. Not only would she be able to play soccer outside in the winter, she also predicted that she would be able to play more often in the summer. Because it didn't rain as much in the summer in San Francisco, fewer games would be called off. I'm glad I figured out what's going on, she said to Max. Now I wonder, does the rest of California have the same weather as San Francisco? Toby still had many more questions about weather patterns. Would it ever snow in San Francisco? What about in other parts of California? Was the weather by the ocean cold or warm? Could she go swimming all year? She wanted to know more about what was going on with the weather. She didn't have all the answers to these questions yet. To answer some of them, she would need new data, but she knew that she could find the answers if she wanted to. All right, so we learned something really interesting here in part one of this lesson. We learned that weather and climate are different in different places. So on the East Coast in Boston, where Toby was living, she experienced really cold, snowy winters and really hot, rainy summers. But the weather was totally different in San Francisco. I experienced the same thing when I moved to Seattle from Baltimore. In Baltimore, like Boston, there's cold, snowy winters and hot, humid summers that have thunderstorms. Since moving to Seattle, I've really experienced some beautiful, nice weather that doesn't change so much throughout the year. So I'm really excited 
to talk more about this story in our next part of our lesson. Thanks for joining me for this book today, and I'll see you next time for part two. Stay safe, stay curious. Bye.